Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have a very, very good problem for you guys called find the difference between, uh, find the difference of two arrays, right? So, so it's a very good one, make sure you pay close attention. So it says given a two zero index array nums one and nums two, right? Return a list answer of size two, where index zero, right? Is a list of these thing integers in number one, right? And uh, which are not present now two okay so answer one is a list of distinct integers in nums one which are not present in nums and nums two which are not present in nums one right so said no the integers in the list may return any order right? so this is a very pretty simple and, and a concise problem statement right so they're giving us uh two arrays guys and we just need to find return um and answer output result right where the first list right contains a list of all the elements in nums one but are not in numbers of two right and then vice versa in the second one right they're in numbers two but are not printed numbers one right and uh so the example is going to be very clear guys right you see the numbers one numbers two and the upper result looks like this right so how do you derive that right is that you can see that one is present in numbers of one right but it's not present in numbers two right and just like three is present there but not present in numbers two okay okay it's like four on the second list right so the first list is all the numbers in numbers of one but are not present in numbers of two okay and uh, this one, uh, the second list, right? Remember what they said here is that all of the numbers present in numbers of two, but are not present in numbers of one. Okay, so we see that four is present there, but it's not present in numbers of one, right? It's so like six is present there, but it's not present in any numbers of numbers of one, right? So that's kind of how they got to it, right? Just so like they did the same thing here, guys. We see that three is present in numbers of one, but it's not anywhere to be found, right? And nums uh, can't find it in there, right? So three's not in there, so that's why you include it there, right? So you can see that, you know, for this one, right? All the numbers present there are present in nums of one, right? So one is there, okay? And two is there as well, right? So therefore, we'll return uh, an empty uh, list, right? Because there, all the numbers are present in nums of one, right? So it's kind of what it is, right? So pretty simple, as you can see. So how do we go ahead and solve this problem statement, guys, right? this problem right so we normally in this channel we like, we like to start off with the brute first solution and the most obvious solution right you know that we know of right is to just do a linear scan through this array right which we do linear scan and for each index right we do another linear scan through the the other array right? for example let's say we, we're doing a linear scan through here right and one and we need to know if there's an element that's present number two right we, we will have an error for loop right you know that will search for that number all right if it does not exist you can't find it right then we could say uh with confidence that it's not in there right so we would count it for each index right so we go check two's in there all right cool then with two's not it's not uh, gonna be part of my apple list and we check three and we check the, the whole array right it's not present and right as you can see right it's not gonna be very efficient right especially as the data you no know, input size you no know, can get very big guys right you know this set right so you kind of have to come up with a better solution, right? Time complexity of uh, numbers of one length of numbers of one times the length of numbers of two, right? It's not going to be too good, right? So we need to do a little bit better, right? So how do we bring down the time complexity, right? You know, right? instead of doing just double full loops, right? You know, those error for loops, it's not going to cut it. So normally when we are doing those repeated search over and over again, right? I like to introduce data structures to help us to reduce the time complexity, right? And uh, this structure of choices, we use high set, hash map, or other ones, right, that can be useful depending on the circumstance, right? But for this one, we're trying to keep track of uh, the distinct integers, right, you know? So the hash set is going to play perfectly here, right? I don't care about the frequency, so I don't need a hash map, I just need a hash set. So the hash set is going to be very efficient for this problem because, you know, we can easily check if an element is present uh, in a set of collection, right, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we could like we could easily check, you know, without having to search the whole thing. We could easily check, you know, a, is that in there or not, right? If it's in there, then we can easily uh, not put it uh, in. All right, so that's kind of we could. So the asset gives us x two quick lookup, right? You know, O one is pretty much what we need to solve these guys, right? You know, it's gonna help us to bring it down, right? The time complexity a lot more. So how is that gonna be useful? Right? We're gonna put all the numbers, right, for each set, right, in their respective asset, right? And then once we add all those numbers and numbers of one to a set, have all the numbers of two to a different set, right? On the same set, right? And then we can loop through the set of numbers, right? And we can easily check, right? You know, okay, so in my set, I'm, lo I lo I'm looping through the set of numbers of one, right? 
I did not check. Is one present in the set of nums two? Okay. One is not present, so therefore I'm added to my output result, and that checks three present. Oh, it's not present. Yeah, uh, output result, right? And the same thing when I want to find all the numbers that are only included, right? And this nums two, right? But not in nums of one. I could check. Is two present in nums of one set? No. Uh, yes, it is present right here. Right? Is four present? No. I don't have, I don't have a four. Is six present? I don't have a six, right? So therefore, it, that's how it's going to be. Very simple as that, right? Which we introduced the, the data structure to I said, right? It's going to be as simple as that, guys, right? So uh, let's go ahead and quickly solve it. So we have a set to draw. Set, uh, it's called set one, right? To differentiate, right? Pretty, pretty good so far. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to, uh, so it looks good. Uh, and then we do the same thing here for the second set. So I'm just put it there. So what we're going to do, we're going to populate them now by doing a simple loop. It's num and um, nums of one. And we'll just go ahead and add all the numbers there. Okay. Okay. So let me make sure I have the right turbo name, right? So the next thing that we do here. So we add all the numbers. Oh, so all the numbers to, to their respective set, right? So what's next for us to do, right, is to. So we need the output results. Uh, so we need the uh, we need to keep track of two lists, right? You know, there's two lists. Like, hope oh, you know that, right? The first list is going to be the list of uh, all the numbers that are numbers one, but not numbers two, right? And then the other one is vice versa, right? So let's integer uh, list uh, one new array list, right? And then we have the same thing for the second list as well, right? Okay, so it looks good so far. So what I'm going to do now is to just look through the all the numbers, right, and the first set, right, you know. And as I'm looping through, guys, right, what I'm going to do a simple check here. So if the set two, right, does not contain that number, right, if it doesn't contain that number, then I can go ahead and add it to the um, list that I'm looking for, right? That means it doesn't exist in numbers of two, right? Because that's what the set two is uh, keeping track of, right? So I go ahead and add it in there, and then we do the same thing here for the second, for the other list, right? So I'm looping out through all the elements in set two, and I'm checking set one, right? You know, it's not in there, right? Okay, I, I get it, the answer pretty fast, right? You know, I don't have to do an inner for loop to check if a number's present or not, right? I could just use a set to bring it down, right? So I'm gonna do, if it's not in there, right? I just add it to my output, to my to this, right? The second list, that's keeping track of all the elements not present in numbers of one, but are present in numbers of two, right? So we have our final thing here. So this call it results, and then it's gonna be new array list. Then we go ahead and add the first list. Go ahead and add the second list as well. And then after, uh, what's next for us now is to just return the result guide, right? So we see that we have our set, you know, to keep track of the integers for each respective, like, you know, right? Set ones for, right? And then we, once we get the element to a set, we could easily go just look through the e set, right? And then just, you know, yeah. So let's press one code, see if we are good to go, right? I think we're missing some, uh, let me call them, right? Looks good, let's press a bit. Awesome, guys, we're able to pass all the test cases, guys. If you guys found value, guys, you guys understood the thought process, let me know in the comment section and give it a like. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe because we'll be doing a lot of other videos just like this one. So if you guys have any questions you guys want me to do in the future, also, uh, also let me know in the comment section. Uh, and yeah, guys, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.